Let's take a quick look at some of the work that we've done in Excel when it comes to being able to visualize your data. Here's an inventory and pricing sheet in SharePoint that I've already opened up in the rich client in Microsoft Excel 2010. Notice it's got a bunch of pricing information and we have data bars here showing us the different numbers. Those were part of Excel 2007. But for data like this, we often see people create charts like this. This chart is very hard to read. Lots of data, you've got this really complex legend, just very hard for your eye to actually match the legend to the line. So we felt like we could do a lot better helping you visualize your data. So right here, let me just insert what we call spark lines. I'm going to click on spark line, I'm going to select the data I want, pricing from March to August, and I'm going to hit OK. And right there in the cell, we draw a tiny little in-cell chart that shows me the trend of that pricing for that data. Notice the ribbon changed. So I can mark the high point and the low point. I can quickly use the gallery to pick something that really looks good. And then of course, as Excel always lets you do, you can fill down. And now that really awful chart looks like this. A nice spark line, one per row. I can really see what the data tells me uh, over time. Very simple but powerful way to, to visualize our data. Now this looks like a simple spreadsheet, but in fact there's a massive amount of data that's feeding this spreadsheet. I'm going to click on a new tool to Excel 2010 called Power Pivot. And Power Pivot lets me work with huge data sets in memory and then work with them very quickly. Check out the bottom left hand side of the screen. Notice how many rows I'm working with? 1.5 million rows of data loaded into Excel right here with Power Pivot. And watch how fast I can sort and filter this. I'm going to select just four dates instead of all the dates. And we sort and filter 1.5 million rows in about half a second. Now I'm dealing with 160,000 rows of data. Maybe I want to sort that by unit cost, done. Maybe I want to sort that by days in stock, done. We could be working with 100 million rows of data in this data set, all in memory, just like it was a couple thousand rows. It looks incredibly fast, it feels very, very performant, uh, and that's very exciting. So it allows us to build BI dashboards like this one. Here's a power pivot chart. It's nothing more than a regular chart that we're all used to. It shows us things like the sum of units on hand, on order, the sum of units sold across a set of products. But on the right hand side, you can see what we call slicers. This is one of the most compelling technologies in Excel 2010 because it allows us to create a visual dashboard of our data. Maybe I only want to see PCs from AdventureWorks. Look at the chart update. Fabricam. PC Unlimited, I'm going to click on a few of those. Maybe I only want to see PCs with 8 meg gigs of RAM, 6 gigs of RAM, and 4 gigs of RAM. So very quickly I'm using these slicers to filter the data set I'm working with. Millions and millions of rows being filtered here. I notice that there's no information about the warranty for these PCs as part of our dashboard. I'd love to do that. So I'm going to analyze this pivot chart and I'm going to add a slicer. This shows me all the different dimensions of data that live in the back end system. And I'm going to choose warranty, which happens to be at the bottom. And watch what happens. We add the warranty years right here as a new slicer. I can drag that over and maybe drop it. Excel will just drop that in for me. And maybe I want to filter PCs to just show PCs that have a two year warranty. It looks like we have about eight different products there. And now I've created a new dashboard using these slicers. And I'm going to save it. And anybody who has access to the spreadsheet, whether it's in a SharePoint server or SharePoint Online in Microsoft's cloud, when they open this up, they're going to see this exact view with the slicers, with the filters that I've selected. And then they're going to be able to do their own analysis. Customers tell us they spend a lot of money writing custom solutions that look just like this. We can take a lot of that savings uh, out of the equation, give it back to our customers, and allow them to build solutions that just look uh, very, very rich and yet are incredibly simple. If I go back to my SharePoint library, there's that spreadsheet. Let me go ahead and click on it and open it inside of Excel in the browser. This is the Excel web app. I don't have to have Excel on my machine. And there's that exact same chart. You can see the slicers with the exact same filters that I applied. Now that I'm here, I can continue to filter this and work on this as if I had built it myself in the rich client. So a great experience across the PC, the phone, and, uh, and the browser is what you're seeing right here. Let me open up a different spreadsheet, in this case sales by country, and I'm going to choose to edit it 
in the browser. A second ago we were viewing something in the browser. Now I want to edit it in the browser. And you'll see the ribbon exists in the web applications. If you know the rich client, you know the web applications, just like you know SharePoint. Bottom right hand corner, can you see this? It says two people are editing the spreadsheet. Right there. Someone else has opened this spreadsheet, a guy named Jim Daly. And Jim's going to make some changes while I make some changes. I'm going to make this $100. And I'm going to make uh, the $100 yellow. And you'll notice as I do that, Jim uh, is also making something yellow. Uh, he made the 7,700 change. Uh, and he made that yellow. Let me go ahead and make my change a different color. So we're, we're working on this at the exact same time. We can see each other. We can modify this together. It makes it very easy to collaborate uh, in new ways. 